Welcome to the show titled Conversation with A. Here we focus on the role behind the person to give you, the viewers, some insight into how to operate in their world. Hello, I'm your host Davo and today we have Mason Beats, um, my tag you might know it as, Mason. and um, yeah I'm happy to be on the, on the show. Let's get right into it. How would you explain the art of producing? I mean I can't explain it for everyone because I guess it's different from person to person but for me it's the fact that I can from my bedroom just on a laptop I can create a song that's being heard by millions of people or it's in the charts and just from just myself in my bedroom and to me that's like the the art of it I would say but yeah so even though you produce across several genres you're here today as a rap producer yeah so how would you explain the difference between a rap beat and a drill beat? I mean, I'd say there's a few differences in sort of the tempo of it, because for drill, you're sort of around a 140 BPM, um, and you have a certain sort of pattern. If you can hear the drum, there's a certain pattern. Whereas with the rap beats, you're looking more traditional tempo, so like 90 BPM and more two-step sort of drums. And I think when you're listening, you can you can really feel the difference in just how it, the songs play out, do you know what I mean? And obviously the content of what's being wrapped is often different as well on the beats as well, so yeah. So when did you decide you wanted to become a producer? I mean, over time, really. I mean, I started producing my friend Joe, um, shout out to him, so he would make beats on his computer and I'd see him doing it and I thought, yeah, like, I, w- I want to try that out. So I'd go on his computer, made a couple things, obviously they weren't very good, um, and then I got the demo for that software on my home computer. So I'd make stuff at home, but I couldn't save it. So what I'd do is I'd make it, take pictures of all the little stuff on the beat, and then I'd go back to his house and then like remake the beat sort of thing. Um, but over time, I thought, right, I'm actually going to invest, get the proper software. And then from there, kept doing it. Obviously, I fell in love with it. And then before you know it, I reached a stage where I thought, I'm actually good enough now that I can send beats to artists and actually get them on the beats and then from there it's all just I mean it's crazy now because I can this is what I do now and obviously it's my the main thing I do so yeah so your love for producing that was a slow burn was that just instantly you fell in love with it? instantly fell in love with it to be honest the minute I saw him doing it I thought obviously I've always loved music um, but when I saw him do that I thought because I played guitar as well before but the fact you can as a producer you can do the whole lot I mean you can do a bit of everything I thought that's just amazing, and from there I was just hooked on it. So yeah. You mentioned you played gu- guitar. Yeah, I used Did to you play. Play any other? Not really. I mean, I can play bass a little bit, but mainly just play guitar. Um, when I was younger, and I always used to. I mean, I'd never really learn the theory of it. I'd normally just play by ear and sort of just. I'd hear a song and I'd work out how I can play it, and then I'd recreate it, sort of thing. Um, but yeah. You mentioned theory there. Did you go to any music school or do any music courses or was everything self-taught? I mean, I went to, so in my actual school, there was a sort of music course I did. And I mean, we did, that was more sort of band sort of stuff. So like playing, you'd play songs in a band and whatnot. But obviously I went to college and I did music. But a lot of it was more based on like live performance sort of stuff, like setting up for live performances and stuff. Um... And we did a bit of theory and stuff, but it never really stuck with me. Like, personally, I've always just done it by ear. And when it comes to the theory, my brain just goes blank. Um, so I have done stuff, and it obviously definitely helped going through it. And I learned little things here and there. But most of it was self-taught, like the production side and everything was like self-taught, um, if that makes sense. When you say self-taught, was that YouTube videos, books, and just going online? Yeah, just, I mean, a mix of that. But a lot of it was just messing around on these on the software so just spending hours just messing around learning obviously the basics of it and then sort of just messing around really until I actually started to make good sounding stuff if that makes sense. So what software and equipment do you use to produce? Well at the moment I use um, FL Studio 20 which is um, commonly used by a lot of producers I know I mean most of them I know use it and um, the equipment wise I mean I have a MSI laptop so a powerful laptop, um, and that's it really. I mean, I've got speakers um, and a pair of headphones, but that's, that's pretty much it. That's all I really need 
to use at the moment for what I do. So, yeah. What is the cost range we're looking at to invest in software and equipment? I mean, I'd say it's quite a lot. I mean, it depends because when you just I started off and got a relatively cheap laptop. Um, the software was around one hundred and fifty pounds, I think. Um, the laptop was a few hundred, and um, and that was about it to start off with. Obviously, as I progressed, I ended up getting like a more expensive, more powerful laptop, which will set you back around thousand pounds, maybe a bit more, if you want to get something that's really powerful. Um, but yeah, and then obviously the speakers and stuff. And the headphones, probably, my headphones are probably like a hundred pounds or something, and the speakers probably around the same. So nothing crazy, but obviously you do need to invest in a certain few things to be able to get going with it. So, yeah. so how long have you been producing for? I mean, I sort of lose track, but I'd say a good, since I started just messing around and making stuff, probably a good couple of years now. Um, but when I started taking it, really seriously was the start of 2020 so that's when I sort of upgraded a couple things and I said right I'm going to start doing this every day and I'm going to see if I can get some artists to use my stuff so I'd say overall a couple of years but since I've been doing it properly I'd say a year and a half around then a little bit more so in that time frame who are some of the artists you've produced with I mean so far I've produced for I mean Freddo um all of the 98 so Jimmy, DA, all of them, V9, um, I've got stuff with Swarms, um, just to name a few, um, and some like some Irish artists, so Officer, and some other people as well, so yeah, good few people so far. Do you remember the first beat you produced, and what came, what came with it? I mean, the first beat, I made nothing, I mean, it's probably just sitting on a hard drive somewhere, sort of sitting there, but one of the first beats I made in 2020, sort of when I started making drill, I remember I got some, I think these were artists from New York, some kind of smaller artists from New York, and I've sent it over, to, I was sending it to anyone I could, um, I sent it over to them, and then they ended up doing a tune on it, and that was the first music video I ever saw on one of my beats, and that was one of my first drill beats, so yeah. So I'm just going to follow up on that last point. So in your uh, in the early stages of your career, how did you get um, your music in front of artists or to be seen by artists? I mean, I'm still trying to work it out. I'm still, I mean, I'm still trying to do that myself right now. But lots of ways. I mean, obviously, just try and message them on Instagram. Say I've got some beats for you, or I'd send emails. Whenever an email would come up, like a public email, I'd send something um, to any email I could get, and obviously YouTube as well. So putting my beats on YouTube over time has really, it's helped me a lot get loads of artists on my beats because you just get such a reach, like, seeing your beats on YouTube, if that makes sense. So, how about now? Do you produce a beat with a particular artist in mind or do you just produce a beat and you see who selects it or chooses it? I mean, it's a, I'd say it's a mix of both because um, as I'm making it, I sort of start off with no idea. Um, and then once I start making it, I start to have ideas of who I can hear in it or who I think would sound good on it. And then from there, when it's done, I can either send it to them or put it on YouTube as well as sort of their type beat. Um, so if it's like a... I did a Central C... Like I do a lot of Central C type beats, so I put them up under Central C type beat if I think it sounds like something he would use. And then a lot of people like to use them sort of beats, so yeah. But it's normally... I'd say join the beat that I decide that. So what about studio time? Do you ever just sit with an artist and create a song or project together? Yeah, yeah, quite a lot. I mean, whenever me and Tifo, we go to a studio a lot together and um, a lot of times the artists, then we will play some beats and they might not be feeling it. So we normally end up having to make something like just sit there and make something in front of them to how they like it. So and it happens a lot of the time. So normally we'll we play some samples. If they like the sample, then we can lay down some drums and they're there the whole process to make sure they like it as well. Um, but yeah, that's fairly often. Without giving us any numbers here, as a producer, how do you earn your income? Yeah, I mean, it's a mix of things. I think as a producer, you've got to, there's got to be a lot of different things because coming in, it's got to be multiple sort of revenue streams. And um, 
for me, obviously selling exclusives to the bigger artists. So when they decide they want to release a song, they pay the upfront for the exclusive and then you also get the sort of back end PRS as well. But as well as that, the YouTube is another really good way because you can sell um, leases to the same beat. So you can sell the same beat, 30 leases to the same beat to loads of smaller artists all over the world. And so combining the two, um, sort of the exclusives with the artists I send to and the YouTube as well, is sort of the way I do it. So yeah, it's a mix of them. Are you able to explain what PRS is? I mean, PRS is sort of how you collect your, like, if it goes on the radio, Sony produces plays in the radio, you obviously owed a little bit of money from every play that you get. So PRS collects all of that and then gets it to you sort of thing. And um, same with the royalties. So if you've got a percentage of royalties on the song, um, PRS can collect all of that and then that's so you can receive it. So, yeah. These revenue splits of the artist or the record label, they're all done via a contract, right? Yeah. If an artist receives an award for a song you produce or an accolade, do you also receive that accolade as well? Yeah, so I've seen, and a lot of producers I know will have it, so let's say you're on an artist album, and that album goes on to go silver, gold or platinum, you also get that as well, like, so you can you get the plaque, you can get the plaque or whatever, or if it hits a certain amount of views on, you can also receive, so it's obviously a good thing that um, the producers also get the sort of respect to be able to get it. Because, um, yeah, so if a song goes platinum, let's say tomorrow I produce a song that goes platinum, um, I'm entitled to all the sort of the plaques and all the same stuff as the artist is. Um, so, yeah. You mentioned going to the studio to work on projects with people, for example. Yeah. So when it comes to um, making collaborations with other producers, how does that work in terms of reaching out as well as working on the beat together? I mean, there's so many different ways you can do it. Um, and obviously reaching out, there's a huge community of producers and we all sort of know of each other. We all work with each other. But like a lot of people make, um, there'll be producers who solely make samples. They make like melodies. So, and they'll send it round to like other producers. And then like you can just take that melody, pull it in, add your drums, add your sort of lay out the beat. And then that's a collaboration that way. Or let's say when me and Tifa are working, because we'll be together a lot of the time, um, we'll sit there and make the melody from scratch together. We'll make it all just on one computer. We'll just add our bits sort of that way as well. So there's multiple different ways you can do it. Um, or you can even send a producer one of your projects. You can send it on email and then he can get in there and add his stuff. So there's loads of different ways you can do it. But yeah. Are you independent or are you part of a label? I mean, they're currently independent, um, but I work with Bermuda. I'm managed by Bermuda Music, so they're who manage me and Antifa as well. Um, but they they manage us, and um, but we're not under an actual label. We're not signed to a label as of right now. So when you say they manage you, what does that mean? Well, that means they're there. So um, shout out Wiz. So he will be doing any time. I like. I've got. Let's say I get sent a contract from a label. He's on that. He knows exactly what to do. He does, like, because obviously I don't know about a lot of that stuff. And obviously it, it all gets sorted sort of that way. And also it's, he can get us in the studio with loads of different artists as well. Or he can, he'll give us an email and say, send beats here for like an artist and then they'll get on the beat. So it's a mix of things, but he does loads of stuff. Where do you draw inspiration from when you're producing? I think lots of things, really. I mean, also I listen to a lot of different sort of music and so does my family and that. So I think one of the key things is just listening to loads of different sorts of music, different genres. Um, and all of that will have little impacts in the stuff you're making as well. Um, and yeah, just just music in general, I think just any sort of music will just inspire and go into the stuff I make, if that makes sense. You mentioned family. Did your friends and family support you when you told them I want to be a producer? Yeah, yeah, from day one, from day one. So my close friends were always, when I first started my page, they would repost it or, and then my family, they were always um, supportive of it. They were never, um, 
they were never like against me doing it. They wanted me to just do what I love doing. So I always got great support from all of them. I'm going to ask you a question that isn't necessarily to do with you. So what would you say is the best rap beat you've ever heard that you did not produce? Best rap beat I've ever heard? That's a good question. I think, hmm, that's a hard one. There's one from a KO song, um, it was produced by Maniac, and I forgot the name of the song, but it's one of the best rap beats I've heard, but there's also one as well, um, the Fredo Daily Duffy, and obviously I did the first half of that, like, but the guy, um, S Finesse, he made the second beat of that, and that is one of my favourite rap beats of all time, hands down. Finally, so I think we asked all guests, what song would you like to include in our playlist? What song? Ooh, that is a good question. Well, I'm not sure if it's already, is the playlist, is it already like a playlist where this is a new playlist, just a, a new, new playlist, song every, a new, yeah, a new song every, every all right, well, I'll have to say, hmm, that is a hard question, I'd say Taco by the 98s, it's one of my favourite beats I've done, and I've heard a lot of beats, like, a similar sort of sense then, like, yeah, that one's special. So would you say that's one of your top beats you've ever produced? Yeah, that's one of my favourites, so yeah, definitely. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me on here, definitely. I'm Mason Beats, and you're tuning into Asani TV. Mason. If you want to be part of the show or are interested in any advertising and sponsorship opportunities, the links are in the description. If you've enjoyed this video, please do comment, like, share, and subscribe.